Hello and welcome to another edition of the Under Centre Podcast. I am your host, Daramar, and we are looking ahead to the divisional round of the playoffs today. Four games to be looked at, uh, two in the AFC, of course, two in the NFC. That means our first round by teams are back. So it is the cream of the crop, you could say, and the Giants in the playoffs now today. <laughs> Joining me to look ahead to the games this week, and I sort of segue for that, is Jake Woolhead. Jake, how are you? Well, I was doing well until you just threw me a little bit of shade for absolutely no reason. <laughs> no, but I'm good. I'm looking forward to the games. Uh, the Jaguars, I can, I can assuredly tell you that's true, but the Giants are a pretty good franchise, a lot of you know. <laughs> How are you, though, anyway? It was a... Uh... Obviously, we didn't get a chance to talk about the game afterwards. We previewed it last week, and we actually thought the Giants were going to win. But how are you feeling now, knowing that the Giants did, in fact, go to Minnesota and beat the Vikings last week? Man, that was such a good game in all phases from the Giants. I was so happy with it. And, I mean, everybody likes to shit on Daniel Jones, but he fucking carried that team. He yeah. just is. I don't know. Now it's, you're just putting an awkward position of how much you're going to have to pay Daniel Jones. Yeah, and can you? I know we made jokes about it for the last couple of years, calling it the NFC Least, and this year, been calling it the NFC Beast. But three of the teams in the NFC divisional round are from the NFC East. I don't think if anyone bet on that at the start of the season, I'm sure they are very, very rich at this time. Well, I think one of the changes that they done recently was that they, or last year, the year before last, was that the worst division would play the worst. The other worst divisions or something like that. So I think that's probably why the schedule worked so well for the for the NFC East. We had a lot of easy almost even the commanders almost made it into the playoffs as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, the command and they were, I think, one, two games off five hundred as yeah. well. You know, after poor start as well, they brought it back. And look, listen, we can get into that with Fionn in terms of decisions they made at quarterback probably costing them a spot at the playoffs. Um but yeah, um, a good year this year for the NFC East. Um, I guess the, I don't know, the sickness or the, the losing sort of virus was transferred over to the NFC South this year because they yeah. all had losing records this year and Tampa Bay got in because someone had to win that division and Tampa Bay were swiftly dispatched by the the, the Cowboys on Monday night um, with Dak Prescott just, you know, getting the five touchdowns with all the doubts that we give him. Um, yeah. And I know the guys last night or this week on the review show gave Dak a lot of praise for it too. But um, I don't know if he got enough praise for the, you know, the play that he did for the uh, the rushing touchdown that he got. When basically he copied yeah. Peyton Manning's one against the Cowboys a couple of years <laughs> Except ago. Except a little bit faster. <laughs> a, a, a lot faster, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looked a little bit smoother. <laughs> I saw a lot of, uh, I saw a lot of uh, play, like, vi- uh, shot by shot, like side by side videos of like the Peyton one and the Dak one, and I think you would have to have slowed down the Dak one or sped up the Peyton one to keep it shot for shot. Um, for that, for every sure. time you watch the Peyton one, it looks like it's put in slow motion for analysis. It actually takes so long to get through <laughs> onto the touchdown. It looked like it's, I just can't. It's just so slow. Uh, the cameraman like lost where the ball was, then found it, and I think he had time to lose it again, and then come back to it before Peyton crossed, <laughs> crossed the the line there to score the touchdown. But yeah, like I said, the Cowboys are of course one of the uh, eight teams we're going to be looking at ahead of our divisional preview this evening. Before we move on. If you haven't already, make sure you're following us on our social channels at UndercenterPod on Twitter, the same on Instagram at UndercenterPod. Subscribe to our uh, channel on YouTube if you are watching already and you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and also hit that like button. Uh, Undercenter Podcast is where you'll find us on YouTube. And the same if you like listening to us on the go. Undercenter Podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. That's where you will find us. And if you watch us, or should I say listen to us on Spotify, you can also watch us from now on because our video podcast goes up there as well. So you don't just hear us, you see our pretty faces too. So don't worry about that. There you go, Jake. It was mostly just so we could get Jake on the screen more. It was part of his contract. Yeah. yeah. So, you know. Um, so let's uh, let's get straight into the game, shall we? And we will start. Uh, we'll start with Saturday evening's game. That is going to be in the AFC. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars heading to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs, the one seed, of course, who had the week off last week. The Jags coming back 
from a 27-0 deficit at halftime to beat the LA Chargers 31 points to 30. Lawrence, uh, Trevor Lawrence, I should say, throwing four picks in the first half and then evening it out with four touchdowns in the second half. The uh, Jaguars, I think, were the first team ever to have a negative uh, turnover differential of five and still win a game. So that was something there for the Chargers fans to take home. The Chiefs, like I mentioned, uh, they had the bye last week. Um, they have Clyde edwards Hilaire back now this week. They they took him back off IR. So him and um, Pacheco will have a sort of dual, a dual running back tandem. And sorry, also Jarek McKinnon as well. I should also mention him because he can't stop scoring touchdowns. Travis Kelsey just needs 99 yards to pass Gronkowski for the most career postseason receiving yards for a tight end as well. Um, these two teams face each other already this season in week 10 with the uh, Chiefs coming out on top by 27 points to 17. Uh, Jake, first of all, uh, your thoughts on this game and are you expecting a high scoring game? Yeah, I think I am this time around because we all know that the, the Chiefs and Mahomes and uh, and all the boys there can get the points in. So we're not really concerned about the Chiefs' offensive side of the ball. But now we're looking at the Jags, who seem to have kind of found their way offensively, apart from throwing four interceptions in, in one half. But come back to whatever it was, 27, whatever. But still, came back. So it looks like the Jags have found a bit of a nice offensive identity. Uh, and the Chiefs... Well, they're not really known for their uh, great defense aside from um, is it Chris Jones on the on the defensive yeah. line. They have a couple of other playmakers there at the back end, but certainly not one of the better th- defenses in the league. Yeah, um, they are the um, highest uh, offensive team in terms of yards per game. Um, and the Jaguars' defense is, you know, it's, it's not terrible. It's middle of the road. Yeah. Um, you know they they obviously had to, they obviously played very poorly in that first half to concede twenty seven points. But importantly enough, they they held the, the Chargers' danger man Austin Eckler to I think only about 30, 40 yards of scrimmage last last week. And um, they so I think they are good for sit for finding out who the danger is and and stopping them. Now an issue that arose in the game last week that um, I just want to bring up very quickly here, if I have it, uh, where am I looking here? Here we are, Um, is in the game against the Chargers, I should say, um, tight end Gerald Everett was the highest leading receiver on the team for the Chargers with 109 yards and a touchdown from uh, eight targets or six receptions from uh, eight targets. And of course, we know that the Chiefs' danger man is Travis Kelsey. And if it's if the defense are given that much up to Gerald Everett, you know what can they possibly do to stop Travis Kelsey this week? Yeah, I don't know. Even if you're one of the top uh, tight end defending teams in the league, you would still have difficulty trying to cover Travis Kelsey on that. Uh, um, the Chiefs' offense there, he's he's just an unbelievable freak, mutant human being, athlete, um, who will always seem to find himself open. And not only will he be open, he'll catch the ball and make it go 15 yards or 10 yards easily. And he's a big dude, so it's hard to take him down. He'll fall forward all the time. But even still, they're going to give points up to him. But they're going to give points up to Pacheco in the back end. He's a he's a fantastic runner. Um, and they've quite nifty wide receivers if Kadarius Tony plays. He's going to have some weird, strange moves where he's just going to look like he's going to be tackled by four dudes, but all of a sudden he's on the other side of the field. So if he can stay healthy this game, I could see that being a bit of a game changer for them as well. Yeah, and I think an important thing that the Jaguars are going to have to do to you know, keep themselves in this game is get to the quarterback. And in that Week 10 game, they never even sacked uh, Patrick Mahomes once. Uh, they never got to him once at all in that game. He threw for over 300 yards for four touchdowns. He did throw one pick, but it's going to be vital that um, they do get to, whether that's Trayvon Walker, Josh Allen, or anyone on that defensive line, make sure that they get to, to Mahomes to stop him from uh, taking control of this game. Yeah, I mean, we all know Mahomes outside the pocket is just kind of a dangerous animal. So, you have to try kind of find a contain on him, but also push it from the middle so that he does what he always does then is 
kind of reverse field, but he ends up 15 yards behind the line, line of scrimmage. And then if he takes a sack from there, that's it's often taking him out of field zone, field goal range and stuff like this. So kind of that's where a key for me is if they can push him back and keep him in the pocket and push him back, 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 instead of trying to do that backyard football that he does so well. I know, I know what you mean. Um, let's get into uh, game picks on this one, Jake. Who are you feeling is going to take it? I mean, I'd like to pick the Jazz Jags. They, they're they like a, a feel-good story and stuff like that, but I think I'm just going to stick with the Chiefs on this one. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to agree with you there with the Chiefs. The, the Jags story is good. It's a great stepping stone for them to continue and maybe improve next season. Um, but I think, yeah, this might be a step too far for them. Um, we did mention, um, obviously having Clyde out as Hilaire back, also Isaiah Pacheco, Jarek McKinnon, you know, he leads running backs with nine receiving touchdowns in 2022. Um, so like you, that's an extra thing that you have to keep an eye on, not just the running ability of the running back, but the ability to catch the ball in the backfield as well and run with it. So um, I think that there's too many weapons on that Chiefs offense for them to, uh, for the Jaguars to maybe overcome. And yeah, I'm going to go with the Chiefs win. It's not going to be a, a blowout or anything like that. I'd say it was something similar, 2027-17. You might get a bit more, maybe maybe like a 38-28 a or something like that. You know, something like that. We'll, we'll see. But um, yeah, the Chiefs, I'm going to go with this one. Um, let's move on to the second game on Saturday night. It's going more into Sunday morning now, obviously airtime. And that is, of course, your... New York Giants traveling to the link to take on the Philadelphia Eagles. Of course, the Philadelphia Eagles, the other team that had the bye this past week. So they are well rested. Jalen Hurts is off the injury report. He is going to play. The Eagles are 2-0 in the regular season this year against the Giants. I saw an interesting stat actually with the New York Giants, Jake. Since 2002, I think you've seen this one and that's why you're not. Since 2002... If the Giants have made it to the playoffs, they have either gone out in the first round or made it to the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl. They won last week, so that means that he gone to the Super Bowl? Uh, I fucking hope so, Darren. <laughs> 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 There's another stat as well that I see in that. Um, since 1960, the Giants... Um, Anytime the Giants have played the number one seed, they've gone to the Super Bowl or something like that. They're 6-0 and against number one seeds. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Um, Daniel Jones, like we mentioned a lot earlier on the show, um, he's the first QB in history to have 300-plus passing yards, two-plus touchdowns touchdown passes and 70 plus rush yards i know like it sounds like yeah well that's obviously not every every qb can do that i know but look at this it's just a stat i found right i'm trying to be when does it when does it end like i I just love how the announcers will just pick out daniel jones who's going to be jalen hurts is going to be the first qb who throws for 300 scores two touchdowns and runs 79 yards like when does it end so many so many times something weird happens when you add an extra layer to the stat Here's a stat, though, that um, is undeniable um, and isn't, you know, far out there just trying to pick it off anything. Daniel Jones is 1-0 in the playoffs. Jalen Hurts is 0-1 in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, that's a good stat. That's a stat I like. That's not a weird stat. That's a stat we can build upon. <laughs> we can get an 0-2 for Jalen Hurts and a 2-0 for Daniel Jones. Let's make it in the broader s- in the postseason. <laughs> in the broader sense, Jake, what are you looking out for in this game? What do the Giants need to do or what do they need to stop to uh, win this game? We had this discussion the last time, last week, when we were talking about the Vikings, where the Giants played them up to the end, a 31-30 loss or whatever it was at the end, to the 60-yard field goal. In a similar vein, the Giants, two times they played the Eagles, they were swept, um, but we... The first time we played them, we were still down. Uh, Xavier McKinney, our, our free safety, who was a quality player, our starting cornerback, Adoree Jackson, who was a quality player. We we're lis- missing Leonard Williams in the middle, who was a quality player. So defensively, I feel like we're a little bit more prepared this time to cover the likes of A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith. Um, these are the things that, 
like that's that's the key for me is the Giants. They need to stop that team offensively because, as we know, they're one of the best offensive teams uh, there are. And then let's just uh, offensively for the Giants. Let's unleash Daniel Jones's legs. I know he's got the seventy not eight yards last week. Let's get him to the hundred. Let's get him over. Let's get him three hundred yards passing and a hundred rushing and two touchdowns. Um, I don't know the uh, the defense of the Eagles kind of scares me. Um, it's a strong defensive line and the Giants. I mean, they have Andrew Thomas on the left tackle slot, and he's an elite player. He's a quality player, but their right tackle, the rookie, he's struggling, and he's had his struggle. So scheme around that and try find a little bit of a quick passing game and then take your shots when you can. Yeah, and like that with the Eagles, and you mentioned with the, the offensive line and the Eagles, defensive line, they had their first team since 1982 with four players each to have 10 sacks plus on the season. So like you're saying, the the name that comes to me right away is Hassan Reddick, who actually lines up on Evan Neal's side of the line as well. So like you mentioned, whether it is putting a tight end in there that can ship Reddick um, for plays, just to slow him down to give Daniel Jones that time is going to be vitally important. Yeah, definitely. And and one of the t- biggest things Daniel Jones has improved on recently this year is his pocket presence. He he feels when they're starting to crumble, crumble, and that's why he's getting all these massive runs out and stuff like that. So um, the one thing I'd like to say about Daniel Jones is learn to fucking slide. Like that man takes a hit like a running back, and uh, that's just scary every time he gets hit. It just scares me. The, no, other, I understand. Uh, I... the other point I, uh, I I wanted to, not even wanted to say, the, the for the first time in a couple of weeks, Jalen Hurts is completely off the injury report. No injury designation. So um, that's at least makes the game a little bit more interesting than uh, than I previously thought. Um, but even, again, he was playing in that last matchup against the Giants in the Week 18 where the Giants, or uh, Week 17 or whatever it was, the Giants rested all their starters um, and they played all their starters. We played a close game. It came down to one score or, or even a score and a touchdown so or a score and a field goal. So I feel like it's fairly close. It's a lot closer than it was at the start of the year. Yeah, and I think like that, you know, when it comes to the Eagles and, and the fact that they were off last week and... um that I think, you know, it leaves people's minds. But I, I got the sense from the last few weeks of the regular season that they were struggling a little bit. Um, I don't know if teams are starting to figure them out. I'm not too sure. But the Giants are the perfect team in place to cause that upset because they know them so well. Divisional games are always so weird when it comes to this. Like the Bengals and the Ravens last week. They played in the regular season just a few weeks ago. I think it was week 16, week 17. And the Bengals blew the doors off them. But when it came to this, because they know each other so well, it was such a tight game last week where it shouldn't have been. And this is the same recipe that could easily happen again here. Yeah, division games are wild, man. Everything happens. It doesn't matter whether you're the Bills or the Dolphins. Like we almost said last week, the Bills almost were toppled off by the Dolphins. So anything can happen in these games. And that's why I think the division rivalries are good. And uh, yeah, man, I'm just so excited for this game. I'm like, I wasn't planning to stay up for it. Quarter past one in the morning on a Saturday leads me to about 5 a.m. And uh, if they win, I'm not sleeping. If they lose, I'm not sleeping after that. So I'm going to stay up for it, though. And I am excited to see it. Good man, good man. Well, one uh, one interesting uh, matchup as well for that defense that that um, could be one to watch out for is the uh, tight end position, um, because uh, Kirk Cousins t- targeted T.J. Hawkinson in the game last week a lot. Um, the Giants seem to give up a good few plays to tight ends at the moment, and when you have someone like Dallas Goddard there, who um, is a very very good. Uh, tight end probably one of the top say i don't know definitely top 10 in the league for sure and um, argument could be made for top five stopping him is going to be vitally important and um what do you think that they're going to have to do to stop him? yeah i got it like there's going to be a little bit of a blueprint of the second half of the vikings game for me um obviously we've seen um hawkinson go a bit wild um throughout that game and then a little bit of adjustment they put the free safety xavier mckinney to to cover him a bit more and man that's where you see in the fourth and eighth stop um that the 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 that Kirk Cousins threw it short. Um, had the, he not made that adjustment, Xavier McKinney wouldn't be there. He would have gotten that first down, and who knows where the game would have ended after that. So um, I feel like there's going to be – they're going to have to put someone on him, but then you still have to cover Jalen Hurts, who who is a dangerous runner himself. So who you cover who, it's just – 
it's pick your poison, I think, and that's what, what kind of scares me defensively for the Giants. Yeah, yeah, that last play cost me money there last week as well. Uh, well I had a, I had a nice li- I had a nice little bet builder, so I had the over. Um, I had Saquon anytime touchdown scorer. I had what was the other thing? Giants my are plus five and a half. Um, and then it was KJ Osborne to get over thirty yards receiving. <laughs> he was free on that play for a play <laughs> over twenty yards, and he already had like fifteen <laughs> yards on the day. So if he would have caught that. Uh, that would have been my bet in. But no, Kirk Cousins has to throw it short on fourth, on fourth and eight. eight. Short. Yeah. And the last play of his game. I mean, that's just a Kirk Cousins line for you. Like, I know I know, uh, Fionn like, went in on him there on the show this week. And I know Fionn obviously has priors as to why he would go in on Kirk Cousins. But I totally agree with him going in on him on that. Throwing it short on fourth and eight in the playoffs. You've got to be kidding me. You got even even to, if it is, you, you throw it into double coverage. At least you launch after. it in the air yeah. as far and high as you can go, and let your dudes try jump up for it and see if they can come down with it. You throw oh, an intercept, you throw an intercept, but it's the end of the game yeah. either way. Uh, let's get should, uh, let's to get be to fair. But sorry, to be fair, sorry, there should never have been a check down route on that as much as that was. Like there should never have been something that's curling back to the quarterback. At least give him some sort of weird slant or a sluggo or something because you cannot just have someone come back and give the defense time to get before the turn turn of the player comes up. No, I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. But let's get into predictions on this. The uh, Eagles and the Giants. Jake, who are you going for? Or do we even need that? Daniel fucking Dimes. All day, the Giants. Obviously, <laughs> I did love the pictures of like people actually have actual dimes with his face on it. It's I I love that. I'm gonna I buy one. That. Actually, I didn't. I'm gonna find a Daniel Dimes dime. I'm gonna get one. <laughs> it looked class. It looked class. I'm a little torn on this one. Um, I don't know now. Like that. The Eagles should realistically win this game. They're at home, one seed. They've had a great season. But that's where this sort of stuff comes into your head, where it's like, yeah, they have had a great season, and this is where it ends, you know. Um, as, as they say, it's hard to beat a team three times in one one year. That's the 49ers, they did that for easy to see, Hawks. So it's, I think they're all right, <laughs> that's true. it's not that hard. True. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is very, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like you said, they played mm-hmm. both games have been played quite close, even when this even when the, the starters were arrested by the Giants. Um you know. And Isaiah Hodgins is playing so well as well and Saquon and how do you think that the Giants uh pa- or the Giants rushing defense has been this year? Um it's not been great, but we have had some injuries on the defensive line that have really um, kind of not helped that. So all our players are healthy as far as I'm aware. All Every player. Yeah, because yeah, the, the Eagles led the league this year in rushing touchdowns. I'll, t- I'll, so, I'll give you a good s- bet, though. Yeah. Boston Scott touchdown. He always scores against the Giants at some point in the game. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does actually. What was that game a couple of years ago? I think he had three, didn't he, in the he same three, game? Like, and he's like, like a third string running back at the time. He got three touchdowns. Yeah. And he's my height. He's five, like he's like five foot six, <laughs> five foot seven or something dude. like that. <laughs> yeah. Whereas I'm wider, obviously, but like he's just uh, <laughs> um, um, I'm five foot six in height and width, you know? I'm, pl- I'm like a perfect square. Six? You're not that small, are you? Five six, five seven, yeah, yeah. Five seven on a good day. Five seven when it's not cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'd love to. S- no, I'm gonna go with it. I, I I said Eagles before we came on air. But obviously to myself. Um. So I'm gonna. I think. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Eagles just oh, in this game. Just oh, in this game. Touchdown Bullshit. win. Probably not touchdown, sorry, field goal win, maybe or something like that. Nice but listen, God, you lose you. you lose in this game, it's not exactly the worst thing in the world. You know, it's still a fantastic year. And then you go into this offseason where you get more pieces to make this team even better. No, give me a Daniel <laughs> Jones second win against the Eagles. It's such retribution. Like, this is such a good story. <laughs> 
no, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna just to change it up a little bit. I'm 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 gonna go Eagles. We can't fully agree on everything. I'm sorry, Jake. Um, you should, but you're happy you're side. happy to rub my face in it next week on the show if the Giants do indeed win. And I'll be happy for win, you if they do. If the Eagles oh, win, God. don't talk to me at all. Yeah, you won't be available next week. Are you telling me that now? <laughs> I won't be available for any review. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on then to the Sunday afternoon and evening game and games, not game, games. Uh, we're going to start with the one that's on at 8 p.m. Irish time on Sunday. That is the Cincinnati Bengals traveling to Orchard Park to take on the Buffalo Bills. Of course, this is the first meeting since the week 17 game, which of course was abandoned due to the, the, the Mar Hamlin. Uh, incident. Thankfully, uh, he is up and about and he is doing very, very well. We heard actually just this week from Coach Sean McDermott, he's actually been in the facility every day this week. Um, so that is great to see that he is still back around the team. He hasn't been in meetings. It's, you know, going day by day, um, which actually probably leads to the hope that he might be at the game. On yeah, Sunday. I would hope for him. I hope he is. Yeah, which would actually be a, a lovely... A lovely uh, little side piece to this game as well, that he actually is able to show up and be there for the game. Um, I know we mentioned it last week that he could have showed up for the game against the Dolphins, but obviously because it's Bengals Bills, probably be probably be a nicer touch that he shows up for this one. Um, of course, the Bengals last week, like I mentioned, they got through a tough game at home to the Ravens, 24 to 17, of course, winning it with that Sam Hubbard 98 yard fumble return for a touchdown, which shouldn't have stood because there was a Back on Mark Andrews. On the ah, shut up. <laughs> shut up. There's a block in the back on every play, everywhere. There is a block time. in the back on every play. There is. There is for sure. Um, this is um, the Bengals, or I should say, last week with their win, won a playoff game in consecutive seasons for the first time in franchise history. There's a nice one. The Bengals uh, are ranked fourth in total offense. The Bills are uh, ranked second in scoring defense. They only allow, on average, 17.9 points a game. Where you get the point nine in a game, I don't know, but sure. Look, that's <laughs> there the stats. There the stats. Matt's, it's um, Matt's there. It's Matt. Um, an interesting side, and uh, not side piece, sorry, an interesting thing for this game and could be important um, to determine the outcome that the Bengals are missing two of their starting O linemen in this game. Alex Kappa is out, and Jonah Williams dislocated his kneecap for the second time this year um, against the Ravens last week. He's still considered week to week, though, oh, which is mental. That, <laughs> that injury just gives me the shivers all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> um jake what are your thoughts ahead of this game yeah no this is a weird one for me as well as you said that um the bengals ravens game it was close until there was a defensive touchdown from a defensive end who ran 99 yards so that came like and they were playing a backup qb so that's a bit weird for me how they could didn't weren't able to score that much um and still had to rely on a defensive uh, touchdown for the um, big one as you said the two old linemen are out for Joe Burrow so big huge one is trying to uh, protect against that fearsome Bills defense and especially as you said they're what first or fourth did you say in defensive scoring second second in in defensive scoring so the uh, protecting Joe Burrow is going to be a, a massive massive um thing here in this game this is a key for them um now they still have their quality players they're joe mixes tyler boyd and, and jamar chase so not as if you're gonna get in a walk in the park you're playing the the what we call wide receivers for the giants um in this game they're still quality wide receivers that's what i'm thinking on the bingo side you have to protect joe burrow but even on the bills yeah. side go on mm-hmm no, I Here was just go. going to say that I was just going to go on a, on a point that you made there about you were surprised the Bengals uh, were in such a close game against a backup quarterback. The Bills were in the exact same situation last week. Exactly, yeah. That's where I was uh, leading on to. They uh, almost lost to a third string uh, quarterback in Skylar Thompson. Thompson. Um, and Josh Allen didn't really have his finest game. He had, what, two wins or something in that game? He, and uh, he had three fumbles. 
Yes, he had uh, three turnovers, um, and he was sacked seven times last week. Yeah, so that's like a that's another mad one. That the game comes down to that. So I'm not like these two teams. You would say they're very strong teams, but they haven't looked great the past couple of weeks. They've had to play. Yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah. It's weird with the with the Bills. Um, like that, it started off so well. I think they went out to a 14 nil lead quite quickly in that game. Um, it looked like Miami's uh, plan was to just do cover zero and blitz the whole time and hope they could get to him before he threw the ball. Um, and it did work, like I said, for most of it because they got to him seven times. Um, cause one of them causing a fumble, which they returned for a touchdown. Um, yeah, it's a weird one. I. I, I know people are saying that because that was close, that their bills are suddenly a bad team, but I don't believe that. Um, I don't believe that. I just think that this was a, a determined sort of Miami team. Maybe they took the game a little lighter than they should have. Um, like they know that the Bengals that they're getting this week. Um, I think that it would be a lot easier to pick a winner in this game if Von Miller was fit. I think Von Miller against that. Uh, backup O line would do serious damage in this in that game, and I would have feared for Joe Mixon and, and that offense. Um, you know they sacked Skylar Thompson four times last week, so they are they do have the ability to get to the quarterback. Um, the run game for the Bengals is stagnating, I guess you could say. It's hit or miss, isn't it? Like it doesn't it, it yeah, doesn't function as well as you'd like it to. No, I feel it's been a lot more misses recently than hits as well, which um, is concerning if you are a Bengals fan because you don't want to have to keep, keep sorry, keep it in the hands of Joe Burrow for the for the whole game because you do that he, well look, there's a chance he's going to get hurt <laughs> because that, like I said, that defensive line has the ability to get to him like Joe Mixon last week, eleven rushing attempts for thirty nine yards. You know, that's that's not going to do it in this game, you know. Um, and with their linebackers as well of Edmonds and, and Milano, I think it's it's a tough team to run against, but they're going to have to run to get that balance that they're going to need to give Joe Burrow as well that time to throw the ball to. If it is Jamar Chase, if it is, um, what does it say, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, you know, they have some dangerous uh, pieces on that offense to do damage to the Bills. Like I said, it's just going to be important if they can give Burrow the time to throw the ball. We mentioned I mentioned it last week and when we were previewing the Seahawks and the, the 49ers game, it was important to give Gino the time to get him to throw the ball. They couldn't. He didn't throw the ball as much as he as accurately as he would have liked. The Seahawks lost that game. The same thing will happen to the Bengals if they don't give him if they don't give Burrow time, they will lose the game. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you there. And just, uh, on the the other point of almost losing to a, a third string quarterback. We do, I do have to mention that is another division game. So again, wild. Like that's just insane. How um like that just shows you how the difference between just playing any game and a division rival. Yeah. Just a little side piece on that as well. I keep saying side piece the whole time. I don't know why. But did you see the video of, of Mike McDaniel last week on the sideline? No. Um, possibly trying to take a vape. Oh, he's vaping. <laughs> yeah, I see <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> 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 ready to go. He was it. he was moving his hand so so slowly up up to, and while the camera was on him, and then just at the last <laughs> second, you could just see him take a deep breath in. I just like come. What's on, his flavor? Man. What's his flavor? Probably something like blueberry <sighs> crumble cloud or something. It would have to be, especially have to be if blue, you're living it? in Miami. It's gonna have to be something like that. I don't know, like orange surprise or something like that. It would have to be, you know. Um, but that that was dream. mental. <laughs> Dolphin and look, it's not... <laughs> <laughs> Dolphin spritz. That's what it is. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. Um, let's get into predictions on this game: the Bengals against the Bills. Who's going to the AFC Championship? You pick first, because I picked. Last. Ah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh, it's tough. It's a it tough game tough. to call, actually. Yeah. Do you want to know the this line? Is the t- this is the toughest game at the moment. Who's? Wanna... I'd say the Bills are favorite, but it can't be any more than a, than a field goal. It's four and a half to the Bills. Yeah, Bills are favorite. Four and a half. It must. It has to be because of that. That um, 
But yeah, would they say home, home team is a, a, a three point advantage, so it's a one and a half goal difference or something? Or is it? Oh, is it? Oh, okay, something like that. That's what they say anyway. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think. See, if you remember back to that week seventeen game, you know, the Bengals actually started very well. Their opening drive went for a touchdown, as well. Um. So they obviously had a plan in place. But I think they want. I think everybody, everybody in the NFL wants the Bills to make it through to the AFC Championship. I'm gonna go with the Bills. I'm gonna go with the Bills to to, to sort things out. I don't think Josh Allen will be as poor with the ball this year. I don't think uh, this week. I don't think he'll take as many sacks as he did this week. I think he has the most interceptions in the league as well for a quarterback. So he's gonna have to clean that up. And with Stefan Diggs against Eli Apple, which we didn't actually get into into much depth about, there's only one winner in that. <laughs> we saw Gate Davis show up last week. You know, Cole Beasley there showed up with a touchdown as well. I know that um, pleased everybody in our group chat last week that, <laughs> that Cole Beasley was contributing to a team. But um, yeah, I'm going to go with the Bills to, uh, to sneak this one. I'm going to go with the Bills as well. I think uh, it's going to be Difficult for the Bengals without them two O linemen. Um, you have to protect Burrow as well, so and I'm not sure they're going to be capable of that. Yeah, yeah, and and I don't have the confidence in their running game either. Um, at the moment, which with Joe Mixon or uh, Samari P Ryan to to be able to do it to to get like I said to give Burrow that time to to throw the ball to to the likes of Jamar, hoping for an entertaining high scoring game. We might get it. Um, but we'll we'll just see, we'll see. Let's move on to the last game of the night, and that is the Sunday evening game, not night game. Thankfully, this one doesn't start at quarter past one in the morning. Um, that is wrong on the graphic. I apologize for that. It actually starts at half eleven, so don't mind that. Um, it is the Dallas Cowboys traveling to San Francisco to take on the Forty Niners. The the Dallas Cowboys got their first road playoff win since 1992 last week, beating the Buccaneers by 31 points to 14. They are sticking with Brett Maher after losing after him missing four extra points, uh, extra point kicks, I should say, um, in the game. Um, thankfully, it didn't mean anything, although it did piss off a lot of people on the sideline, including that <laughs> Chris Jack. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the 49ers fresh off their 41 to 23 win against the Seahawks. Um, it is the third time in four years that they have made it to the divisional rounds of the playoffs under Kyle Shanahan. Um, Brock Purdy is the first QB ever, to, first rookie, sorry, QB ever to have four total touchdowns in a playoff game. Jake, your thoughts ahead of this game? Yeah, I don't know. This is a tough one to call as well. They're they're kind of both similarly built for me. Um, Bar you could Dak is probably a better quarterback than Brock Purdy. Let's just be real about it. But they both have incredible defenses led by incredible defensive ends, um, and have some really quality players defensively. Um, and then if you look on the offensive side of the ball, obviously both teams have weapons. You've got Tony Pollard and Zeke, and then you've got CD Lamb. And then now, if you're trying to add up the mats, the 49ers might may have a little bit with Debo Ayuk. They've got Chris McCaffrey and George Kittle. So they might have a little bit of an advantage with the weapon side of things. But certainly, I think it's going to be a good game. Like that that Cowboys defense is a scary one for me. Micah Parsons just went off in that Buccaneers game. Now, I do think the books are very, well, not good. <laughs> um, and it was a bad team to beat. Um, so I don't know. It's it's a tough one for me to, to, to call it. Um, it's a buzzsaw defense, that 49ers for me. They're just, I don't know. They just look like you can't beat them. I don't know. That's that's what I'm getting at here. <laughs> yeah, it, it is tough. And you mentioned the two important players in that for the for the Cowboys, which goes with the one of the most important players in the 49ers, and that's the 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 running backs. You know, Pollard and Zeke versus McCaffrey, and you could say Elijah Mitchell as well, but he's just coming back from injury. He's more to give McCaffrey a, a break when he needs it. Um, yeah, which defense can stop the opposing team's running attack will be the winner of this game. Um, because I think that that's what Dallas are going to want to do. I think they might set out to stop the run and try and trust their backfield to go one-on-one -on -one with the receivers and try and force Brock Purdy to throw the ball more than maybe he would want to. Um, maybe they can force some mistakes, but 
look, even last week he was pretty mistake free. He started off a bit nervously um, in the game against the Seahawks. Um, I know the Seahawks are winning a, a half time in that game, but an interesting stat from that game is that the 49ers only punted the ball once. So they were getting down the field all the time against the Seahawks. Just for the first half, they weren't converting them to touchdowns. They were uh, field goals. The second half, they converted them to touchdowns. Um, and I think the 49ers are one of the best teams in the league, minus maybe the Ravens when Lamar is back, that they can just make drives go on for ages and ages and ages and crush your soul and tire out that defense. Um, and they are they seem to be the masters of that, like that. A seven minute 45 second drive at the start of the third quarter for their touchdown against the Seahawks was just a, a perfect example of that. Um, but like I said, the Cowboys as well, like that, they have some serious weapons you mentioned. Um, you know, Noah Brown has shown up so much this year as well for them because teams seem to forget about him because they spend so much time on CD Lamb or Michael Gallup. T.Y. Hilton, of course, is there now. Dalton Schultz has become Dak's favourite receiver all of a sudden now as well. Um, so that will be interesting to see with how um, Hufanga gets on against um, Dalton Schultz. That will be a matchup I'd be uh, very excited to see and see how he gets on with that because Hufanga's had a fantastic year. But Jake, is there anything else you're looking for in this game? Yeah, there's two things there that I just thought of. Um, I haven't seen much. I haven't looked into it, but the Cowboys left tackle. I think it's Jason Peters went out with an injury in the last game against the Bucks. So they're obviously, if he's out in this game, that's going to be a big loss against um, Nick or Nick Bosa. Um, so that'll be a, a, an interesting matchup to watch. The second second string tackle against uh, Nick Bosa. So that'll be one to watch. And then the other thing as well, if you if you want to really look into everything, if you're picking a, one coach out of these two coaches to lead a team to win, you're not going to pick Mike McCarthy in this matchup. Yeah, you think that, but it's tough because you would say uh, Mike McCarthy was got was wouldn't make it to the playoffs. You made it to the playoffs. You thought Mike McCarthy wouldn't beat the Bucks. He beat the Bucks. You know. He's he's getting something out of this team, and 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 I think with with Dan Quinn as well as defensive coordinator, who probably won't be there after this season, he's primed, I'm sure, to get one of those head coaching jobs. Um, but who's uh, the OC there? Is it Kellen Moore? Is Kellen the OC? Moore. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's getting interest as well for head coach jobs. They seem to be doing fantastic jobs getting their team together. I know what you mean about Jason Peters, and that's one thing I didn't mention. And, and thank you, Jake, for bringing it up because he is forty. 40 years old, left tackle going up against probably, like you said, N Nick Bosa. Um, Tyron Smith is normally their starting left tackle, so maybe he might come in, but he's only coming off an injury, so we don't know how like match ready and how match fit he is. So that's going to be a, a, a huge a huge thing to watch there over on the right. Well, actually, Tyron Smith, I think he's playing on the right side at the moment. I'm yeah. just looking at the depth chart. He's uh, right tackle one now for that. So um, we'll have to see. Now, maybe they push Tyler Smith out to left tackle and bring Conor McGovern in that left guard position. That's a possibility for this game if Jason Peters doesn't make it. But look, listen, let's get let's get into predictions on this one. Um I'll go first. I fancy I fancy the 49ers to win this game. Um, I just think that they are this juggernaut that just doesn't seem to be able to be stopped at the moment. And I, I don't hold out much hope for any team that comes through that other game and the Giants and the Eagles one. I think the 49ers are primed to make it to the Super Bowl this year, which was my prediction, by the way. Um, so I think I'm going to go with the 49ers. Jake, what do you think? Yeah, I'm going to stick with you here on the 49ers. They're, uh, I just think they're a more complete team. They're strong both sides of the ball. And I think just think a little bit more creative offensively. That's it as well, yeah. Because if it's not, like we said, McCaffrey or Mitchell running in the backfield, it's Debo, you know. And, and I don't know what it is about mm -hmm. Debo, but no man seems to be able to tackle him. It takes about three or four. So... Um, we'll see what happens there. In, it's in about six game, five that... and like two hundred and fifty pounds or something. He's unstoppable <laughs> when he gets a bit of steam behind him. <laughs> I don't even think he's six five, is he? I don't know what height he is. I just took a guess. I'll, hang on, I'll tell you yeah. now. He's a big guy, though. 
dude. Come he on, is uh, 1.83 meters, whatever that is in foot. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't tell you. Oh, no, I just to... okay. Hang on, I'll Google it. Hold on, I've got this here. He is six, He's foot. six okay, foot. I thought he was bigger. I He's thought he was bigger. Foot. At 215 pounds. Big man to tackle. Yeah. He's a big man, hard man to tackle for sure. But there's guys taller than him that are easier to tackle, and I don't, I don't get it. But anyway, yeah, we're we're both going for the 49ers in this game. Um, stick close to our social media channels. Um, you'll find the predictions for all the guys and who they think is going to make it to the NFC and AFC Championship games. Um, at Under Center Pod on Twitter, at Under Center Pod on Instagram, uh, Under Center Podcasts on YouTube. If you are watching this on YouTube um, and you haven't already liked this video, make sure you hit that like button, please, for us. And also, while you're at it, hit the subscribe button, too, for that, because you want to keep a, a, a close eye on the channel in the off-season for some of the uh, stuff that we have planned. Uh, also, the podcast side of things to listen to on the go, under Center Podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, you will find us there. Jake, as always, sir, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Dara. It was a pleasure. No problem. And I look forward to possibly, maybe, seeing you next week. Well, it depends on what happens on Saturday night. You going to get happy, Jake, or angry, Jake? Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anger sells more. You know, the, you, do you ever see those fan channels that, like, their views go way up when the team's doing terrible because then no. people give out, but when they're doing well, the views are all the way down, so. I think I'm just going to have the lights off and you don't want to see the tears and rage <laughs> that I'll have. <laughs> I don't, but the viewers want to, Jake. Yeah, fair. The Maybe they do. Maybe Think about they the do. viewers. Yeah, I will. <laughs> like, I will. But that that is our divisional weekend preview, all wrapped up in a nice little bow for you. There, we'll be back next week, looking back at the games, and of course, looking ahead to the AFC and NFC Championship. But until next time, stay safe, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>